Okay, I just think this is an exceptional film, and uh, I'm glad we have Christina Lane, the author of Phantom Lady, Joan Harrison, the forgotten woman behind Alfred Hitchcock, who was the producer of this film. And Christina is going to try to help us understand uh, exactly what is happening at the end of this movie and, and why, after this amazing story, it seems a lot of people are confused by the ending. So give us a little rundown on, on what transpired here. It is a jaw-dropping ending, and partly I think that's a reflection of how challenging it was to um, basically come to a conclusion. Joan Harrison and Jonathan Latimer and the filmmakers were having trouble figuring out how to end the film, especially with trouble with the studios and the censors. And even in terms of the very beginning, um, going back to the source material, it was a difficult treatment. So Gordon McDonald had written the treatment for this film, and Gordon McDonald had also recently written the treatment for Shadow of a Doubt. So Harrison was happy to be working with Gordon McDonald's source material, but the end of that treatment was actually this strange literary ending where he basically finished the kind of narration by Ballantyne by saying, if you're reading this and it's been published, then you know that everyone has determined that I'm not guilty. And if you're reading this and it hasn't been published as, a, as an unpublished manuscript, then I've been determined guilty and I'm, I've been sent to the gallows. So there was no way that she could bring that to the screen and she was troubled in terms of finding an ending. So she was up against the censors in terms of figuring out how she could set Valentine free, which I think she wanted to do, or whether she would essentially find a way to, to let him go um, escape, somehow let him escape. And at the end of the day, she was actually trying to find a way to, to permit him to commit suicide, but the PCA wouldn't let her do that because there was a suicide ban by the Production Code Administration. One of the things I admire so much about Joan Harrison is is her her fight. You know, that she was a storyteller who wanted to push the envelope. And obviously, having worked with Alfred Hitchcock, she understood the value of the ending that kind of twists the knife. And with this one, I felt that the ending that makes the most sense is that he realizes he's going to be found guilty or believes he's going to be found guilty. And he attempts to execute himself by leaping out the window. And then that was going to be the end, that he kills himself. And then the jury comes in not guilty. And that's like the ultimate irony in the story, right, is he didn't have to do that. Uh, but this is one of the things that confounds me about the production code administration. They wouldn't allow suicide, but they would allow a trigger-happy bailiff to shoot him dead in the courtroom when there's absolutely no reason to do that, right? I mean, somebody could just grab him and pull him in from the ledge. They don't have to shoot him. <laughs> but that's not quite as dramatic, right? So uh, it, it's an odd ending. But But this was par for the course for Joan Harrison, was it not, That with, with the way she wanted to finish films? It was. Joan Harrison really enjoyed making films that had surprise endings or a reversal of expectations. And this was, you know, her, her thing. She really wanted to surprise audiences because she didn't believe in the status quo and she wanted to shake things up and she rarely was able to, you know, and partly I do believe that this was a result of her working in a male dominated, you know, system where I think that if she had been a man, she probably would have won out more often, you know, in these battles. Christina, we just have a couple of minutes left. Uh, give us your notion about uh, Joan Harrison's place in film history. So Joan Harrison was one of only three female producers in the 1940s, and she was incredibly important in terms of the films that she produced. Each and every one are, are so worth seeing. I think that her influence on Alfred Hitchcock and his career is often underappreciated. You know, many people say that Alfred Hitchcock helped make Joan Harrison, but in truth, I think that also, Joan Harrison helped to make Alfred Hitchcock. So her story is too often seen as just an appendage to, to his story. So her place in film history is, is critical. And also, 
it's just so actually enormous. You know, she had uh, decades in film, but also she helped to produce or did produce the Alfred Hitchcock television series. So she was a pioneer in television as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Christina, again, I'm so happy that you wrote this book and you're giving uh, Joan Harrison her due. And I'm thrilled to say that uh, you will be back because uh, early next year we're going to be showing Joan Harrison's The Strange Affair of Uncle Harry, and you'll come back and join us for that? Thank you. I can't wait. Okay, very, very good. However, I will be back next week uh, when Noir Alley will be showing Otto Preminger's 1950 classic Where the Sidewalk Ends with Dana Andrews and Gene Tierney. So you'll all want to come back for that. So thanks again, Christina, and we'll see you in, uh, in January.